In ufology, conspiracy theory, science fiction, and comic book stories, claims or stories have circulated linking UFOs to Nazi Germany. The German UFO theories describe supposedly successful attempts to develop advanced aircraft or spacecraft prior to and during World War II, further asserting the post-war survival of these craft in secret underground bases in Antarctica, South America, or the United States, along with their creators. During the Second World War, unusual sightings in the skies above Europe were often interpreted as novel Nazi technology. In the first years of the Cold War, Western nations speculated that unusual sightings might stem from Soviet deployment of captured or reverse engineered Nazi technology. In World War II, the so-called Foo Fighters, a variety of unusual and anomalous aerial phenomena, were witnessed by both Axis and Allied personnel. While some Foo Fighter reports were dismissed as the misperceptions of troops in the heat of combat, others were taken seriously and leading scientists such as Luis Alvarez began to investigate them. In at least some cases, Allied intelligence and commanders suspected that Foo Fighters reported in the European theater represented advanced German aircraft or weapons, particularly given that Germans had already developed such technological innovations as 5-1 and 5-2 rockets and the first operational jet-powered Mi-262 fighter planes. A minority of Foo Fighters seemed to have inflicted damage to Allied aircraft. Ghost rockets were rocket, or missile-shaped, unidentified flying objects sighted in 1946, mostly in Sweden and nearby countries like Finland. The first reports of ghost rockets were made on February 26, 1946 by Finnish observers. About 2,000 sightings were logged between May and December 1946, with peaks on 9 and 11 August 1946. 200 sightings were verified with radar returns and authorities recovered physical fragments which were attributed to ghost rockets. Investigations concluded that many ghost rocket sightings were probably caused by meteors. For example, the peaks of the sightings on 9 and 11 August 1946 also fall within the peak of the annual Perseid meteor shower. However, most ghost rocket sightings did not occur during meteor shower activity and furthermore displayed characteristics inconsistent with meteors, such as reported maneuverability. Debate continues as to the origins of the unidentified ghost rockets. In 1946, however, it was thought likely that they originated from the former German rocket facility at Pienamunda and were long-range tests by the Soviets of captured German 5, 1 or 5, two missiles or perhaps another early form of cruise missile because of the ways they were sometimes seen to maneuver. This prompted the Swedish army to issue a directive stating that newspapers were not to report the exact location of ghost rocket sightings or any information regarding the direction or speed of the object. This information, they reasoned, was vital for evaluation purposes to the nation or nations assumed to be performing the tests. Similar sentiments regarding German technology resurfaced during the 1947 flying disc craze after Kenneth Arnold's widely reported close encounter with nine crescent-shaped objects moving at a high velocity. Personnel of Project Sign, the first U.S. Air Force UFO investigation group, noted that the advanced flying wing aeronautical designs of the German Horton brothers were similar to some UFO. Reports in 1959, Captain Edward G. Ruppelt, the first head of Project Blue Book, Project Science follow-up investigation, wrote, When WWII ended, the Germans had several radical types of aircraft and guided missiles under development. The majority were in the most preliminary stages, but they were the only known craft that could even approach the performance of objects reported by UFO observers. While these early speculations and reports were limited primarily to military personnel, the earliest assertion of German flying saucers in the mass media appears to have been an article which appeared in the Italian newspaper Il Giornale d'Italia in early 1950. Written by Professor Giuseppe Belluzzo, an Italian scientist and a former Italian minister of national economy under the Mussolini regime, it claimed that types of flying discs were designed and studied in Germany and Italy as early as 1942. Belluzzo also expressed the opinion that some great power is launching discs to study them. The same month, German technician Rudolf Schriever, 1909-1953,
gave an interview to German news magazine Der Spiegel, in which he claimed that he had designed a craft powered by a circular plane of rotating turbine blades 49 FT 15M in diameter. He said that the project had been developed by him and his team at BMW's Prague Works until April 1945, when he fled to Czechoslovakia. His designs for the disc and a model were stolen from his workshop in Bremerhaven. Leahy in 1948, and he was convinced that Czech agents had built his craft for a foreign power. In a separate interview with Der Spiegel in October 1952, he said that the plans were stolen from a farm he was hiding in near Regan on 14 May 1945. There are other discrepancies between the two interviews that add to the confusion. In 1953, when Avro Canada announced that it was developing the VZ-9 of, uh, of Rokor, a circular jet aircraft with an estimated speed of 1,500 MPs, 2,400 cam, German engineer George Kling claimed that such designs had been developed during the Nazi era. Klein identified two types of supposed German flying disks. A non-rotating disc developed at Breslau by 5 to rocket engineer Richard Maiethi, which was captured by the Soviets while Maieth fled to the U.S. via France and ended up working for Avro. A disc developed by Rudolf Schriever and Klaus haber mohol at Prague, which consisted of a ring of moving turbine blades around a fixed cockpit. Klein claimed that he had witnessed this craft's first crewed flight on 14 February 1945 when it managed to climb to 12,400 EM 40,700 FTU in three minutes and attained a speed of 2,200 MPAM, 1,400 MEV, 1,400 MEV. In level flight, Maya, the claim he had worked on the 5-2 program, but no corroborate in the flight, exists. George Klein claimed the engineer had escaped capture by the Soviets in Breslau, by flying out in a Messerschmitt Me 163 comet, which would have been impossible. There is no evidence that Habermal even existed. Rudolf Schriever claimed he had worked for Heinkel as a test pilot and engineer between 1940 and 1940 on 1941, but this has never been corroborated. In post-war Germany, Schriever drove supply trucks for the U.S. Army, but told newspaper reporters that delegates from foreign powers were constantly making him offers regarding his wartime projects. Aeronautical engineer Roy Fedden remarked that the only craft that could approach the capabilities attributed to flying saucers were those being designed by the Germans towards the end of the war. Fedden, who was also chief of the technical mission to Germany for the Ministry of Aircraft Production, stated in 1945, I have seen enough of their designs and production plans to realize that if they, the Germans, had managed to prolong the war some months longer, we would have been confronted with a set of entirely new and deadly developments in air warfare. Fedden also added that the Germans were working on a number of very unusual aeronautical projects, though he did not elaborate upon his statement. By the 1960s, Fringe authors began spreading tales of Nazi UFOs that were tied to the occult or aliens. According to these theories and fictional stories, various potential code names or subclassifications of Nazi UFO, crafts such as Runflugs U, Fuerball Discus, Hondabu, Hondaberg, Garrett Grat, Glock F7, Real Kugel Blitz, not related to the self prowled anti aircraft gun of the same name, Andromeda, Gerat, Flugkriesel, Kugelwaffe, Jensate's Flug Machine, and Reich's Flugscheibe have all been referenced. Model kit companies like Airfix and Revel have released kits of the Honbo, and it is featured in video games like X-Plane 11 and Warplanes, What Do You Two Dog Fight? Accounts appeared as early as 1950, likely inspired by historical German development of specialized engines such as Victor Schoberger's Repulsine around the time of World War II. Elements of these claims have been incorporated into various works of fictional and purportedly non-fictional media, including video games and documentaries, often mixed in with more substantiated information. German UFO literature very often conforms largely to documented history on the following points. Nazi Germany claimed the territory of New Swabia in Antarctica, sent an expedition there in 1938, and planned others. Nazi Germany conducted research into advanced propulsion technology, including rocketry, Victor Schoberger's engine research, Horten flying wing craft, and the Arthur Sack AS-6 experimental circular winged aircraft. 
Le Matin des Magicians. The Morning of the Magicians, a 1960 book by Louis Powles and Jacques Bergier, made many spectacular claims about the real society of Berlin. Several years later, writers, including Jan van Helsing, Norbert Jürgen Ratofer, and Vladimir Terzisky, have built on their work connecting the real society with UFOs. Among their claims, they imply that the society may have made contact with an alien race and dedicated itself to creating spacecraft to reach the aliens. In partnership with the Thule Society and the Nazi Party, the Vril Society developed a series of flying disc prototypes. With the Nazi defeat, the society allegedly retreated to a base in Antarctica and vanished into the hollow earth to meet up with the leaders of an advanced race inhabiting inner earth. When German Holocaust denier Ernst Zundel started Samizdat Publishers in the 1970s, he initially catered to the ufology community, which was then at its peak of public acceptance. His books claimed that flying saucers were Nazi secret weapons launched from an underground base in Antarctica, from which the Nazis hoped to conquer the Earth and possibly the planets. Zundel also sold for $9,999 seats on an exploration team to locate the polar entrance to the hollow earth. Some who interviewed Zundel claimed that he privately admitted it was a deliberate hoax to build publicity for Samistad, although he still defended it as late as 2002. In 1978, Miguel Serrano, a Chilean diplomat and Nazi sympathizer, published El Cordon Dorado. Hitlerismo Esoterico, the Golden Thread, Esoteric Hitlerism, in Spanish, in which he claimed that Adolf Hitler was an avatar of Vishnu and was at that time communing with hyperborean gods in an underground Antarctic base in New Swabia. Serrano predicted that Hitler would lead a fleet of UFOs from the base to establish the Fourth Reich. In popular culture, this alleged UFA fleet is referred to as the Final Battalion. Die Glock, the bell, was a purported top secret Nazi scientific technological device secret weapon or Wunderwaffe. First described by Polish journalist and author Igor Witkowski, 1963, in Prada o Wunderwaffe, 2000. It was later popularized by military journalist and author Nick Cook, who associated it with Nazi occultism, anti-gravity, and free energy suppression research. Mainstream reviewers have criticized claims about Die Glock as being pseudoscientific, recycled rumors, and a hoax. Die Glock and other alleged Nazi miracle weapons have been dramatized in video games, television shows, and novels. However, many skeptics have doubted that such a bell uh, uh, was actually designed or ever built.